Hi everyone and welcome back to the AI Syndicate channel. If you guys have been following AI for the last couple of years, chances are you've heard of the term self-supervised learning. In this video, we will give you a quick introduction to what self-supervised learning is and why it is such a big deal. So let's get into it. Most of us by now should be familiar with supervised learning since it is the most ubiquitous form of deep learning in the past few years. Essentially, supervised learning is when you use a labeled dataset to train a network. You have these images of cats and dogs. The dataset also has labels that this image is a cat and this image is a dog. And the network is trained to predict, given this image, is it a cat or a dog? So reiterating, the network learns to map the input images into labels, or more generally, inputs into labels. And this works very well given one main thing, a lot of label data. But guess what we have a lack of in real world applications? Label data. And labeling data is expensive, which is a bottleneck for supervised learning. On the other hand, we have tons of unlabeled data on the internet, which supervised learning cannot make use of without labels. You see where I'm going with this? So what if you have very little label data for your domain? What can you do? You could do transfer learning, which has been one of my favorite ideas in ML. Essentially, transfer learning is akin to, let's say, I know how to drive an automatic transmission car. But now if I wanted to learn how to drive a manual transmission car, all that prior knowledge that I learned while driving an automatic car, including handling, starting the car, road manners, etc., will transfer over to the manual transmission car as well. But I will have to fine tune my knowledge of driving by learning how to use the clutch and the gear shift in the manual car. Now similarly, stealing Andrew Ng's example, let's say I have a small label data set of 100 radiology images, and I want to train a network for radiology diagnosis. What we can do is we can take a gigantic labeled image data set containing millions of labeled images that are not radiology images and pre-train a model on that and then fine tune that model on the 100 radiology images for my task. The reason I love this idea and why this idea works is since it takes advantage of the very fundamental structure of neural networks, which is a hierarchical structure. Knowledge on the higher layers builds on top of the layers below. So essentially, the lower layers learn things like edge detection or lower level representations. Middle layers learn intermediate representations, and as you get higher and higher, you start learning the specific semantics of your task. So, for transfer learning, all you have to do is you use the lower layers of the pre-trained model, which remember was trained on the big label dataset, and then in a way retrain or fine-tune the higher layers only using your 100 radiology images. Now obviously you see how powerful this idea is. Reusing representations of data is an awesome approach. But let's push it one step further. What if the data that you pre-train on or learn the representations on did not need to have labels? That is the promise of self-supervised learning. And that is why it's an even more powerful idea. Getting gigantic unlabeled datasets is much easier for many domains. So how does self-supervised learning work? We take unlabeled data and force the neural network to learn what we mainly care about, which are the features or representations of the data. So with that goal in mind, to learn good representations of the unlabeled data that we can reuse, let's look at an example of how it's done in practice. In this technique, we have unlabeled images that we rotate by multiple different angles, let's say 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and then we train the network to predict how much the image is rotated. Now in order to be able to do this, the network has to learn good representations, since to predict that the source image is rotated by 90 degrees or 180 degrees, it has to learn the contents of the image, such as the legs have to be under the body, as well as the overall semantics and content of the image in this example. Note here that the rotation labels are all automated and super easy to generate. You just have a script that rotates them and generates the labels. It's definitely not the same as labeling a million images of cats and dogs. 
Now, once you learn these representations and pre-train the model, you can fine-tune on a very small label dataset to perform a downstream task of classifying these as images of horses or deer. So just to drill down the concept further, we take an unlabeled dataset, we force the network to learn a good reusable representation by defining a proxy task or loss. This is now our pre-trained model. Then we fine tune the model on a small labeled dataset for our specific task. Note here that the representations are task independent in theory. You can use the same representations for different kinds of tasks. That is the intuition behind self-supervised learning, but this is barely scratching the surface. There are a ton of ideas that build on top of self-supervised learning that we did not cover in this video, such as contrastive learning. But the purpose of this video was to give you an intuition on what self-supervised learning is, and I hope you got some value out of this. We might cover some of the other techniques and papers in this space later in detail, so subscribe if you don't want to miss out on those. Thank you for watching, until next time.